These little blue pills are getting more and more common. You see them popping up on TV ads, on YouTube, even for sponsored podcasts and content. It's as easy as going online, getting a prescription, and then getting it delivered to your door. And it goes by all kinds of names, but it's also known as Viagra and Cialis. And these fall into the category of something called a PDE5 inhibitor. Coach JMO here, and we are going to get into this new age popping pill craze. Not only is it insane how they're marketing these products to guys in their teens and 20s, but even for older men, there are some serious effects and some side effects that they need to be aware of. Some of which are even irreversible and can actually ruin your sex life forever. And the interesting part is that these pills have only started becoming available in the 1990s, and they started becoming popular in the 2010s. So people have not really seemed to have much of a problem with this before and there are some great alternative options out there that don't have these catastrophic effects some of which are even free which i go over towards the end of this video but let's first start with the scary stuff at first it doesn't really seem so bad now you may have heard the story that these pills were first invented or first discovered by another study that was looking at the use of pharmaceuticals with high blood pressure and chest pains. But first, we have to really go into what happens down there when you start getting excited. And this process is very complex because it only covers such a small fraction of the whole big picture. As arousal happens, cyclic GMP and other compounds flood the system. This cyclic GMP will then relax the smooth muscles in the penis blood vessels. And this increases the blood flow to the penis by 20 to 40 times. Now, this is where the PDE5 enzyme comes into play. Hence the name of these drugs, PDE5 inhibitors. These enzymes break down the cyclic GMP molecule, which leads to the erection reversing and your penile muscles returning back to normal. But the problem here really isn't about having erections that are lasting too long, which is another serious side effect of taking these pills. However, this process here is interfering with your body's own natural enzyme production. And this is how everything can go awry. Now, the PDE5 inhibitor itself is not actually the problem. In fact, some different herbs and foods contain this naturally, but it becomes the reliance, the consistency, the quantity that these pharmaceuticals provide that our bodies are just not accustomed to, and that cannot be found in nature, which starts to desensitize our receptors. But this whole process is missing something huge, and that is emotional connection and what really stimulates these molecules from the brain down to the rest of the body. Now, men's health and sex coach Taylor Johnson did a little experimentation here. He took the pills with himself and also with his partner. I did get an erection and I was able to have physical penetrative sex, but my whole body wasn't aroused. My mind wasn't aroused. And it was this interesting sort of like almost a disconnect in my body where my penis was very hard, but the rest of my body was like, eh, take it or leave it. And the effect here did not seem to be as exciting as men think it is, especially when you actually have a deep connection with someone and can create that intimacy that's not just based on yes or no. And there could be a whole plethora of reasons why men cannot get it up. Almost countless, some of which include not eating enough food, not being able to think about something else, getting jealous, getting distracted, being hurt. These things all play a huge role, but we cannot look at them as clearly scientifically. And very, very few of these can actually be solved with a pill. In fact, a lot of these become worse when a pill becomes involved. And this is where it gets a little bit more esoteric, the value, the purpose, and the ability to have truly fulfilling intercourse. But as we see from Taylor here, it can also have some very dangerous side effects and not just physically dangerous. When you take this stuff, it can make you bypass all the really important signals in your body, in your penis, in your mind that are telling you not to have sex with somebody that you shouldn't have sex with. And guys are having so much sex with people that they shouldn't have sex with. So he found that it can not only have detrimental mental health effects, but it also had effects far deeper than just getting an erection. And I get it, it would be so convenient to just be able to get it on whenever you want. But at the same time, you need to listen to your body and provide it what it needs in order to get over this problem that you're facing. Because if you use a pill, you're going to develop dependency and you're not going to be able to fully enjoy it as much. 
And the scariest part here truly is the dependency. Now imagine this, you or someone you love are taking these pills. And at first you had no issues, but you start to develop debilitating side effects. And it is too overpowering to even be able to partake in intercourse or even be aroused, which is crucial for the effects of these pills to take place. Or even scarier and more likely, you develop a dependency on these pills and are unable to actually perform without them. That means no lovemaking unless you have those pills. And that could be a possibility for some men, but what happens when these pills suddenly stop working and you or that person is suddenly no longer able to get or maintain an erection whatsoever? Talk about absolutely terrifying. But here's the issue here. We're not able to see this. Studies aren't showing us what happens in the long run. And that's for good reason. It makes sense, right? If these companies are making billions of dollars on these products and the products work in the short term, then there's no real need to check for long-term reliance, right? So at this point, we need to start extrapolating more data from more and more antidotal evidence of people who have this problem, who have taken these pills for too long and lose their arousal and their ability to get hard. It's traumatizing, man, and it's terrible. And I feel so bad for these men. But on top of that, we also need to look at the science and the biology of the body and what's going on with the negative feedback loops. This loop is when the body starts to realize it's getting something taken care of externally, so it stopped doing it on its own, or it does more to compensate for this. Think about TRT and natural testosterone production. This can rev up or totally stop the production of other hormones within the body. For example, it stops testosterone, but it could also increase estrogen, as well as increasing dihydrotestosterone, DHT, or sex hormone binding globulin, SHBG. And it does this to try and balance everything out. But that's the problem. We act like we know better than our bodies by just incorporating some external pharmaceutical. And that is exactly what can be going on with these PDE5 inhibitor pills. But it's not the enzyme that I'm worrying about. It's how the body will regulate the chemicals that induce erection, like nitric oxide and cyclic GMP. And on top of that, there's the lack of connection and enjoyment. Turning off the body's sensors to truly, fully appreciate and be passionate and ravish your partner's body, mind, and heart. Heart. Now, I know I'm getting a little bit out there, but you got to listen to me for a second. I get it. It's easy to just try and bypass all of these things to get to an outcome. But I promise you, man, it is not worth it. Do anything you can within your own power while you still have the chance. The hard work will definitely be worth it for your own fulfillment and for the fulfillment of your partner, not to mention your mental state. But in order to get to that point, there are other steps that we need to take. Yes, eating enough calories and having proper blood flow to that area are all crucial steps. And then making sure to avoid the seed oils, the oxidized foods, the fried foods, anything that could get those arteries clogged up, as well as things like overdoing vitamin D supplementation that can calcify your actual arteries that can calcify your muscle tissues. So make sure to balance out that vitamin D with vitamin K2 or get your vitamin D naturally from sunlight. So dialing diet is crucial, but so is how you move your body. We're so sedentary today. We're sitting down so often in the car, at the office, in front of the TV, on the couch. We need to remember how to move as humans again. The best tactics, especially for a sedentary lifestyle, are walking, stretching the hips, and strengthening and becoming more mindful of the pelvic floor and sacrum. And once you're at that level, getting into a deep squat can really help combine all of those movements and focus on strengthening and stabilizing those muscles. But it's not just about strength here. It's about mobility, being limber, being able to move and stretch your body in different ways so the blood can flow through it so you're not tight and stuck and the blood isn't able to move anywhere. One of my favorite videos to share on this as well is the Doc Farhan Gorilla Libido Blood Flow Exercises. Check the link for that in the description because that helped me out a ton. And the one thing that can greatly improve all of the above that I just mentioned are fascial maneuvers because our whole body is covered and wrapped by fascial tissue. Now, there are also two herbs that I want to talk about that have been shown to have some incredible benefits for blood flow. One of them being black ginger, also known as Thai ginseng. And it's even been shown in a human study to have erection improvement capabilities. And this herb also works in a more harmonious way with the PDE5 inhibitor activity. I personally love taking black ginger as a pre-workout along with honey and sea salt. But be warned, it does have a bitter taste. So if you cannot handle the taste, I recommend capsules. But if you can handle the taste, I highly recommend taking it raw. And the other incredible powerhouse is schizandra berry. 
also coined the boner berry or the berry of the bedroom. And that is for very good reason. Because the active compounds in this herb have been clinically shown improve erection quality. And remember that cyclic GMP we mentioned earlier as well, as well as nitric oxide? Well, schizandra, one of its main compounds, gominsin A, have been clinically shown to have the potential to increase that as well. And for more info on schizandra berry, check out the video on schizandra berry health benefits. So make sure to take care of your manly parts. Man, I cannot emphasize this enough. Don't try and numb things away with some pill. I know it's tempting. I know it can be easier. I know it might solve the problem. And hey, maybe you can use this as a tool, rarely, and maybe there are people that actually need this for clinical reasons. But those are far and few between. Most guys want a shortcut. Unfortunately, this is going to end up getting you a lot further away from your desired outcome. Just take care of your health and your health will take care of you. So remember guys, like and subscribe for your health.